So this video is for anyone who is planning on building a new PC with an Intel Alder Lake CPU, so 12600K, 12900K, and you're planning on doing it in the ITX form factor. As many of you know, uh, I do prefer more compact PC builds like this one right here, especially since most gaming builds these days and most even production builds uh, are only using a single GPU, so ITX kind of just makes sense, right? Uh, but the experience this time around, especially if you're going with an unlocked uh, Alder Lake CPU build and you're going with a Z690 motherboard, that's where the experience is very, very different. And all of this pretty much comes down to what motherboard options you have available to you. So let's start there. At the moment, there are four Z690 ITX motherboards out there, one from each of the main motherboard manufacturers. Unfortunately, though, only one of these is compatible with DDR4 memory, and that's the first problem that we run into. The other three motherboards only use DDR5 memory, which is just not worth it from a price to performance perspective. I mean, you're paying some sometimes double what you'd pay for a similar performing DDR4 memory kit. It is a lot harder to get your hands on as well, although availability does look to be improving. Still though, your options there are definitely more limited. So if you're already going with like a 12900K and an RTX 3080, then maybe this point isn't so relevant to you. You'd probably just fork out the extra cash for the DDR5 memory anyway. But like, let's say you wanted to go with the 12600K and more of a gaming focused build and really prioritize the budget for the GPU. You just can't do that when you're forking out hundreds of dollars for a DDR5 memory kit. But let's say that you do settle on a motherboard and memory kit that you're happy with. The next problem that you'll run into is CPU cooler compatibility. Now, if you wind back the clock three or four years ago, ITX motherboards back then were basically compatible with any low profile cooler that you could think of. These days though, ITX motherboards look like they've been hitting the gym and taking some serious juice on the side. I mean, take a look at this comparison here. The ITX board of today is built completely different. Now, on one hand, this is actually really good because Z690 ITX boards are absolutely stacked with features. I mean, two M.2 slots, more onboard headers than ever, and absolutely huge heat sinks for the power circuitry and the toasty M.2 drives. Honestly, there has been no better time to build an enthusiast ITX machine, especially when such boards can be paired with the 16 core 12900K. But I have two of these Z690 ITX motherboards. One is the DDR4 Aorus Ultra and the other is the DDR5 Unify from MSI. And neither of them can fit a low profile CPU cooler. The 47mm Alpenphone Blackridge, which is perfect for cases like the DNA4 and the Velka cases, has absolutely no chance. And the 70mm tall Noctua NHL12S, that also is too big. Now look, of course, if you're going with a 12900K 16 core CPU, you're not going to pair that with a low profile CPU call. I totally understand that. But what if you wanted to go with a 12600K or maybe the 12700K? After a bit of tuning, that would be a really good combination with a Noctua low profile cooler like the L12S. Unfortunately though, with the Z690 ITX motherboards, that would have been possible before with like Z390 and Z490, but today it is just not a possible combination. So yeah, motherboards are getting better in most ways. Uh, we've never had this many features on an ITX form factor, but they really are straying away from the basics. So okay, low profile coolers, they're out of the question. Water cooling then should be no issue. But that's where we run into more problems yet again. On the Z690 ITX Unify, there is only one pump block orientation that is actually possible here, which just completely blows my mind. The NZXT Kraken cooler here can only be successfully installed with the tubes facing towards the top of the motherboard, and that's fine, but it might make for some weird or maybe impossible tube routing. And it's not like this is a giant liquid cooler. The Kraken uses a fairly standard sized Acetec pump block, which is shared among a lot of liquid coolers. The Aorus Ultra is thankfully a little bit more forgiving. Here pointing the tubes towards the left side of the board is possible with the NZXT Kraken, although it is definitely a tight fit. Pointing the tubes towards the memory dims is also kind of possible, but as you can see, it is putting a lot of stress on them, and this is not something that I would recommend. As for the really big tower coolers like the Noctua NHD15, that won't fit here on the Aorus Ultra board. The heat sinks are just too big, but it does seem to be 
possible here on the MSI Unifier. I don't have the correct LGA 1700 mounting kit for this cooler, but the clearances do seem to work. Now, as for the other two Z690 ITX board options, the ASUS Strix seems to be incredibly built up like the Aorus, so expect cooler compatibility to be a pretty similar experience, but the ASRock Phantom seems to be the slimmest Z690i board out of the bunch, which should give you a few more options in terms of cooler compatibility. Again though, these two boards are DDR5 memory only, so prepare to spend big for not much in return. So with the memory, motherboard, and CPU cooler out of the way, next up is the case that you'll actually be putting it in. With the current versions of the NKSM1 and Form T1 being discontinued and awaiting new models, and the DNA4 and Ghost S1 and IQNix ZX1 only supporting two slot GPUs, that leaves the Meshlicious, NR200, and Q58 as your likely top three options. So here's an idea of what a 12900K ITX build would look like. Supped Meshlicious, 280ml liquid cooler, 750 watt power supply from Corsair, and a powerful GPU on the flip side. If you're interested to know more about this case, I will leave some more videos down below that I've completed with it. And I'll also link the exact 90 degree display port adapter that I'm using here as well. That is not included in the box, unfortunately. Now, as for what kind of thermal performance you can expect on the CPU, well, with no power or voltage tuning and with the fans at 1200 RPM, you can easily get the 12900K to 90 degrees plus on all of the performance cores under heavy load. We're not at the point of thermal throttling here, but we are pretty damn close and sure we could ramp the fans up to like 2000 RPM, but that would be pretty damn loud. Now under gaming loads, of course, you would be fine, definitely nothing to worry about there, but you don't exactly buy a 12900K just for gaming. Overall, if you're putting the 12900K under full power in an ITX case, this is probably the minimum that I would recommend. There is a little bit of undervolting that you can do to the 12900K though. I dropped the voltage from 1.2 volts down to 1.17 volts and that did improve temperatures and power consumption a little bit without impacting performance. So Intel Alder Lake plus ITX, there are a lot of things to plan out and consider, especially if you're going the full distance with the i9-12900K. Now Intel's B660 motherboard lineup was just announced yesterday along with some more affordable locked CPUs like the i5-12400. And honestly, if you're interested in primarily a gaming PC and less so a production type of build, then that is the way to go. Overclocking isn't supported there, but you will have a lot more budget left over for a better GPU. Not to mention, if you're going ITX, B660 motherboards look a lot easier to work with. So do expect some content with the i5-12400 coming up, along with B660, we might do a couple builds. I really do think that's gonna be a killer combination moving forward. Uh, but look, if you are going 12900K, 12700K and 12600K with the Z690 ITX motherboard, yeah, you've got a lot of stuff to think about. And I really would hope that motherboard manufacturers would stop building up their ITX motherboards like they have so much room, like, you know, this creeping in of this clear out zone around the CPU, it really is ruining cooler compatibility. And you know, even when you're mounting a liquid cooler, it is just becoming a problem and a nuisance. So let's just stop doing that if we can. Otherwise, a huge thanks for watching. Really hope this helps you out and I'll see you all in the next one.